This is an example of non-ignorable missing data. So imagine we have two types of individuals, individuals who have a college degree and individuals who have a high school degree but not a college degree. Imagine we're interested in their earnings, maybe how much money per year they make. And initially, imagine we can you know, go into their house and look through their financial records and learn their true earnings. And we see some people here. And some other people over here. And if we were to do that and run OLS, we would uh, get you know a line going through the conditional mean for the high school group and the conditional, I should say, sample mean for the college group. So we get something like that. Um, instead of being able to go through their home and financial record, imagine we give out a survey where we just ask people what their earnings were in the past year. And imagine that uh, many people are happy to take our survey but once they have earnings above a certain level here, I'll draw that in a different color. Uh, once they have earnings above here, they do not want to answer our survey. So Imagine we get responses from everybody below that level of earnings. So all these purple dots are the ones we actually get to see in our survey responses, but the ones above that we do not see. So if we only have the purple dots, and we run OLS, as you can see, we'll get something more like that. So we can see there's a lot of bias in this case from the missing data because the reason it was missing is related to the Y value itself. And in this case, we can see both the intercept is lower, so we estimate a lower average earnings for the high school group, and also the slope is lower because even more so we estimate a lower average earnings for the college group. Uh, so this is an example of how missing data that is non-ignorable can be uh, an important source of bias.